world's number one ranked test nation? And secondly, how tough was the decision to actually go for Matthew Wade over Brad Hatton? Uh, to answer the first part of the question, most definitely. I think we've got a very strong squad of 12 players for this first test match. Um, I guess uh, one of the hardest things about selecting a team is you pick, uh, you need to pick your best squad for the conditions you're going to face and the opposition you're going to play against. And, and I believe that's what we've done for this first test match. Um, second party question, the decision between Matthew, ha Matthew Wade and Brad Haddon was obviously very tough. Um, you know, there's a selection panel of, of five selectors and there was a lot of talk about that over you know, the past few days there. Two very good wiki keepers, um, Hads with a lot of experience and has played a fair bit of international cricket, and Wadey, um, who has recently come onto the scene and, and grabbed his opportunity with both hands. And um, you know it was always going to be tough, but I think for the team, whichever way we went, you know the team was always going to be fine because we're, we're very lucky in this country to have two fantastic keepers. But our decision is Matthew Wade. Uh, I know he'll do a great job. He's, he's, he's been a wonderful player for Australia so far in his, his brief career. He scored 100 in his last Test match, and uh, he, he deserves this opportunity. Hey, Lawler. Uh, John, can you talk us through um, putting Cummins, ahead, uh, Pattinson ahead of Cummins, if, if that was the decision? And Michael, maybe talk us about your thoughts on a uh, four-man pace, four pace attack in the first Test. Uh, yeah, look, we didn't uh, feel as though Pat Cummins was um, ready to, bet, to play in a Test match. Uh, we're very keen for him to play a Sheffield Shield match soon. Uh, and that he's likely to become uh, very much onto the radar for perhaps the third test in Perth. Now, that's not speculating that he'll be selected for that, but we'll be, he'll be ready for uh, content to, get, to be in contention at that stage. Dan Brady. Oh, sorry, and my part of the question, yeah. go again, Pete, sorry. Sorry, uh, your, th your thoughts on maybe a four-man pace attack in Brisbane? Or yeah, I, I think it'd be silly to, to think about that right now. I've said before... Um, conditions are, are so important. We need to get up to Brisbane and assess conditions. I think we're lucky with the squad we have that we've got four very good fast bowlers, but we've also got a very good spinner who's had a lot of success for Australia. Um, I always love having spin in my team, but I'd be silly not to assess conditions and, and speak to Mickey Arthur and the other selectors once we get to Brisbane and, and pick our best 11 that we think is going to help us win the Test match. And overrate is an issue in that well, it depends how quick we get through our overs. Um, yeah, I don't think we'll select Nathan Lyon because of overrates. I think we'll work out what we think the best attack is. It's going to help us take 20 wickets in that test match, and we'll pick that, that 11. Dan Brady. John, could you please just talk us through the evolution of the thinking about, uh, about Wade v. v. Haddon, so since the West Indies through the, through the year and when the final decision was reached? Well, it, I mean, there's been a lot of speculation during uh, well, the last month or so, and I think it, it's all been said. And then we as a national selection panel just had to weigh up all of those uh, considerations. Uh, I mean, both had very strong claims. I mean, Brad Haddon is a, you know, is a fine cricketer, uh, has represented Australia with great distinction. But Matthew Wade got his break. And as Michael said, he made 100 in his last test match. Um, it was, I mean, on balance, in, in the end, we all unanimous, uh, unanimously, we just went for Matthew Wade. But it was a very tough decision, as Michael has said. Was Kelly? Um, still on that subject, how much communication have you had with Brad? And for you, Michael, it must have been really hard speaking to him because you are friends with him. I uh, phoned Brad towards the end of last week, uh, and we had a really good conversation. Uh, and part of that conversation that it was he was still very much in the reckoning, uh, and I gave the, him the assurance that if. Uh, Matthew Wade were to be injured in the first test, he'd be our replacement wicketkeeper coming into the second test. Yeah, for me, it, it's obviously always difficult. I think the one thing I've said to the players, though, since taking over the captaincy and, and becoming a selector, that uh, no selection that I have any impact in uh, impact on will be personal. It's all about what's best for the team. And, um, and I, I've spoken to Brad, and he certainly knows, uh, you know, this won't affect our relationship. We've been great friends for... For a long time, I, I think I played my first game with Brad, with Brad when I was 17. So, um, yeah, things won't change there. He's, he's been a great player for a long time. And, you know, this certainly isn't the end of his career, in my opinion. I think his batting at the moment is as good as anybody in first-class cricket. I know he'll be pushing for selection, whether it be as a wiki-keeper batsman or just a batsman. Um, yeah, so I certainly don't think we've seen the end of Brad Adam. Chris Barrett. 
John, you, uh, you partly answered this, but can you actually see a way back for Haddon at, at the age of 35, or, 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 or is this the end? Look, no, nobody knows what the future will bring, but, but he's very much in contention. Um, as, as I said, if there was an injury, he could be, come back uh, very quickly. Um, he's certainly, I mean, he's a very fit 35-year-old. He remains strongly in contention. So, John, I just, uh, do you have any concerns about uh, Nathan Lyon? He's uh, had a poor A tour and he's got six wickets at 66 going into this uh, season. So it's uh, hardly an ideal preparation at all, is it? Yeah, look, we, we've been concerned about Nathan's form, but he's performed very well for Australia. Uh, and we're hoping that, uh, you know, in the 10 or 11 days leading into the test, he really recaptures uh, his old form and his bowling at his best. But he's got a very good record for Australia. I mean, he's served us well uh, overseas and in Australia. So I can't say who it is there, but Fox Sports. Mark Chester from Fox Sports News. John, Ed Cowan is averaging under 30 at the moment. Uh, would he be the batsman under most pressure in the top order right now? Look, I, I spoke uh, quite a bit about Ed last week at a press conference and I don't have much to add other than uh, I watched him last night at the MCG and he was in sparkling form. So we, uh, we've got faith in him at the top of the order and we're looking forward to him doing really well. Just down the front here, Dan Brady. John, uh, regarding the, uh, the, the pace bowlers and the, you know, their workloads and their rhythms and, and all of that, you've got a bit of a bit of decision making between now and the first day as to, uh, as to who starts up? Yes, indeed. <laughs> well, well, well um, I mean, one, one guy in particular, Ben Hilton, now, he's a very experienced bowler, but he hasn't had much bowling in the first class arena in the past. Uh, no, so we'll, we'll be watching uh, very closely uh, this next week or so. Uh, there's a full round of Sheffield Shield fixtures in the Australia A, uh, so we'll be keenly uh, watching how the bowlers go in that uh, Shield match and how they look and what sort of shape they're in uh, in Brisbane. We'll be there for four or five days before the first test. We'll make th that decision either the day before or the morning of the match. And just regarding uh, Pat Cummins, I know he's not in the squad, but is there any chance he'll be in Brisbane to be around the around the group because the expectation might be around later? Yes, there is a chance, yes. Just off the back there, can't see. Guys, how much does, uh, I guess, you're playing a rotational role with a lot of the bowlers, but in batsmen you've got a 37-year-old in Michael Hussey who's averaging just over nine against the likes of Stain and Lawful and stuff. How do you sort of uh, evaluate a position like that? Well, uh, last year, um, when we were contemplating the first test team against um, India at the Boxing Day test, we were discussing Ben Hilfenhaus and a couple amongst us said that Ben Hilfenhaus's record at the MCG is not at all good. Uh, and then one amongst us said, well, he's due to take wickets. <laughs> and he got five. So I would say against the South African, Michael Hussey, who's a very fine batsman, is due to make some runs. Questions? Yeah, it's nice to see him making runs. Um, I watched him bat last night and uh, he looks in pretty good nick. His balance looks good. Uh, I know he's been working as hard as anybody, as he always does. And I think more than um, more than the result, just for his own mind frame going into this first test match, he knows he's spent plenty of time in the middle. He knows he's ready to go now. So I think Ricky will be in for a big summer. Mark? Yeah, it's obviously very positive that um, that the guys have been playing a bit of first-class cricket as well, so they've got a lot of bowling under their belt. I think we're lucky at the moment in Australia that we've got uh, a very good group of young bowlers with plenty of talent, uh, and as I've said for a while now, it's about turning that talent into performance, and I think we've seen um, over the first few Sheffield Shield games that guys are performing both with bat and ball, and you know Peter Siddle and James Pattinson are certainly two of those guys that have have stood up at the start of the summer and um, have some good performances on the board. Can I just add to that? I mean, there's those... I mean, we've mentioned Pat Cummins and uh, we all have high hopes for him. But Josh Hazelwood is in particularly good form. Jackson Bird is returning to form. 
after a wonderful season last season and bowled very well at the MCG. And Mitchell Johnson uh, in the first two Shield games in Perth. Uh, his action was good and he bowled very well. And I know Michael uh, made, a, made 60 odd against him and uh, thought how well he bowled. So there's a few in the wings. The, the depth there is uh, very pleasing. Johnson, we don't see them in uh, the Australia A side. Are, we, are they being protected from showing themselves off in front of the South Africans? Well, in a sense, we're, we've, uh, we're keeping Josh Hazelwood up our sleeve. Uh, the South Africans have certainly seen a lot of Mitch Johnson, uh, but we didn't feel as though there was a need for Mitch to gain that experience from an Australia A appearance. Just in the middle here. Michael, uh, Tim from 2GB. Um, can you just talk about your own form and what goals you might be setting for your own batting this summer? I'd like a few more runs and I've scored so far. I think I made 40-odd in club cricket a couple of weeks ago, so I'd like a few more than that. Um, oh, look, I think my preparation's been as good as it, it can be. I haven't had much cricket of late due to Champions League, but um, I feel fit and healthy. My body's in a good place. Uh, mentally, I'm, I'm really excited and keen to start this summer, and I know how big a summer it is. And as I said um, last year, I think as captain of the team, you need to be leading by example and, and scoring runs, and it's no different this year. I'd love to... Uh, Love to emulate last summer and, and make sure I'm leading the way with the bat. Dan? John, uh, how significant is it that over the, over the, uh, the past 12 months you've developed a relatively settled test squad and test side that can go into Brisbane, guys familiar with each other and have played in, in wins together going into the series? Well, I think it's significant that, uh, I mean, you know, whatever, however the team's composed, you know, 11 players playing for Australia, uh, you know, we expect a high degree of teamwork from them to get on well and get on and bond together uh, really well. But it certainly does help when people have played together for some time uh, and that batting line-up is, is well settled and we're hoping that they really prosper. Now, Michael, are you playing uh, this coming Shield game and will you be playing three days or four? Uh, I'm definitely playing the Shield game and I'm not sure at this stage if I'll be playing three days or four. I think the plan is for... Um, It'll be an individual case, I'm sure. If, if New South Wales are, are batting on day four, I think it'd be silly for uh, the batters to be pulled out to, um, you know, to go into camp. I think we're very lucky that we're playing up in Brisbane, so it's quite convenient that once the game's over, we can, we can go into camp. Uh, but in saying that, the other side of that for a bowler, for instance, if they've bowled a lot in the first innings, I think it'd be silly for them to, um, to overload themselves leading into a test match. So I think Pat Howard's onto that. Um, the plan at the moment is to pull everybody out, but I, I know Paddy, uh, he'll, he'll make sure he assesses once we get closer to day four. I think if you're 35 not out overnight, you might resume the next morning. I'll be doing my best. <laughs>